Hi everybody, it's Maggie Model here, and we're going to do another Paint with Maggie episode, and this time we are going to be painting the safari. Um, this is a kind of like every two weeks I'm doing this series, at least for now, um, every two weeks, and it's just free lessons I'm giving to people as a give back to the community that has given me so much over these years. Um, so they're very easy beginner paintings. Uh, fear not if you um, are not here today live painting with me. I am recording them and I'm putting them over on my website so that way um, you can paint, pause and play along. Uh, so the idea is that you can paint in the comfort of your own home. Uh, you can learn to paint with me. And if you are needing a little break and you need to pause, you just pause the video and then play again when you're ready to continue on. So if I'm ever going too fast, you can go at your leisure. Um, so I just want to say thank you again for joining me today. This is a super fast, super easy painting. Um, it has a really, really great technique to it that I really like to share. It's one of my favorite techniques to, to show. And you can use this on any background and use any kind of tech, um, any kind of silhouette image over top of it. And it'll turn out beautiful every time. Um, so I'm going to flip you over and we're going to go through the supplies really quickly. And then we are going to just jump into this painting. All right, so let's flip you around. All right, so let's go over our supplies for today. So we're going to jump back and forth between the canvas and over here on the palette. Um, so we are going to need very little paint colors today. Now I have two different red colors here. This one is called Crimson. And this one is brilliant red. These are all both by Artist Loft. Um, I just pick it just because for color study, it's always good to use, not super expensive paint. Um, whichever color doesn't matter, um, you'll get the same results, just depending on if you want a little bit of a deeper red sky or a little bit more poppy red color. Um, so those are the two reds. We're just gonna put those over to here to the side for one second. <clears throat> brilliant yellow is another primary color just by Artist Loft. Um, so just a basic primary yellow. Uh, get as close to like that yellow, that lemon yellow color as you can. Uh, this is burnt umber. Uh, this is just graduate acrylic, but honestly just any kind of like burnt sienna or like reddish, darkish, reddish brown. And the last color I don't have up here, this is the black paint. I just have a lot of it. So whatever black paint you want to use. All right, now let's go over the supplies that you're gonna need. Um, of course, we're going to need a water jar. Oops, sorry, water jar full of water, clean water. <clears throat> Again, these are the regular paintbrushes that I use all the time. So we have a one inch wide flat brush. We have a three quarter angle, or sorry, half inch angle brush. I have a number four round brush. And this is the zero or number one liner brush. <clears throat> Beg my pardon. Um, if you don't like that brush, you just need something that's got a really small um, bristle, such as this guy right there. Um, I believe this is, if I can even see it, it is a number one and it's just our number one round brush. It's just a smaller version of this one. Uh, so whatever you have for a long skinny brush like that, it's gonna be perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna set these all off to the side, except for that big wide brush. I'm gonna get aimed into the water right away. Um, another couple of things that you're going to need. Um, this is a like a um, a drought uh, sponge or grout sorry grout sponge uh, for when you're doing grouting and tiling. Uh, but you just need a, one of those kind of like really porous kitchen sponges. And like I just cut a chunk off. You need just like a piece about ish that big. So just have that ready and on hand. Um, and then something that you're also going to need is white chalk or like a graphite pencil or just like a mechanical pen, not mechanical, sorry, not a mechanical pencil, but just like a regular, um, just old school pencil like that. Um, and the other thing, which is completely optional, if you don't have it with you today, that is okay. It is going to be available over on my website. Um, but these are like little um, silhouette uh, PDF files. Uh, so there's an elephant pointing left and right. So if you're wanting the elephant pointing the other way, there's also these right facing elephants as well. As we have a ton of um, right facing giraffes and the same thing, but left facing giraffes. So they're just basically the same thing, but left and right. Um, so just have those printed out just on normal copy paper 
nothing fancy um, and then just have them off to the side. You will need those for the class. Um, if you don't have it, it's totally fine. Um, you can always improvise or just do the treat. It'll be perfectly fine. Um, so another thing just for speeding up the drying process, we have just our handy dandy blow dry here. Uh, and then that is it. So I'm gonna revert you guys back over to here. Okay, so we are gonna go to our canvas now. Let's just put your paint out. You're gonna need a fair bit of red. I'm just gonna use the primary red. It's the first one my hand grabbed. That's the only reason why. You will need enough to cover the canvas, but be very sparing with it because um, a little paint goes a long way. I always feel like I put out too much as well. So like I'm gonna say that's more than enough. Okay, um, you won't need yellow just yet. So you just need to put out the brown. And if your brown isn't very black, you might, or very dark, sorry. If your brown is not very dark, you're gonna probably want to add a very tiny bit of black into it. This is pretty nice brown. Um, but if you have like a color that's like a, there's one that's called burnt sienna and it's a very like coppery, ready, orangey color. I'm seeing if I have it here, but it doesn't look like I do. Um, you're gonna wanna have to add some black to it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this one's just a little bit more red. So you'll wanna probably add some black into that just to make it a bit darker. I'm not going to do that. I think that one's pretty okay. Uh, so let me get my big wide brush out of the water. Oh yes, and one more thing that you're gonna need is a rag. So just take your big wide brush out of the water and just get a little bit of that extra water off of it. And you're just gonna cover your whole canvas or not whole canvas, but the top three quarters of your canvas with this red paint. Get it in there quickly. You need to blend some color in there. Whoops, this is why. And a rig, so that way if you slot, you can clean it up right away. If you do big wide brush strokes, sometimes you'll notice if you, um, I'm using a, a, like a canvas I have repurposed over and over. So it's got a lot of gesso on it. So it's already been kind of like really loved. So if you're finding that's, if you're using a new canvas and it's kind of just soaking up that paint um, and it's really hard to move, just go over it. Don't worry about like the, like the lines because you'll see like the paintbrush lines. Don't worry about that now. Just get the paint kind of like in there and make sure you don't see any white part of that canvas peeking through. So then once you get a decent amount of that red color in there, you can always go like full brush strokes from side to side and they'll kind of like level out any brush marks that you have. You'll get rid of the ugly, get rid of the ugly brush marks, okay? So keep going. If your paint is like drying really quickly, just make sure um, you just keep going over top of it. If you keep going over top of it and just kind of leveling it out, it'll just keep it wet. And we wanna make sure we keep that bottom layer of red paint fairly wet. Okay. Make sure you do your sides. You're gonna hang this up on your wall, which I guarantee you will. It's gonna be beautiful. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you keep that paint hydrated. So keep it wet. Okay. A lot of red paint. Okay, so you can see I'm just going back and forth. That's pretty good. I'm gonna just down a little bit farther than I want my land to go. I'm gonna say my land is gonna kind of live somewhere down in here somewhere, but I'm just gonna go a little bit farther than I think anyway. All right, so it's getting a little dry up in here. So just gonna, okay, that's pretty good. Now we have, now we have this layer of red paint and we could put our sky and it would look okay, but we wanna add some darker and 
um, colors to it. So I don't know if you've ever seen like those African safari pictures where there's like those hazy darker clouds and kind of like the background. And um, when you see the sun, it's kind of like broken up uh, because of all that kind of like the heat is just like radiating off of the out of the plane. So it's kind of breaking everything up. It's making it an optical illusion. So we're gonna make that optical illusion. Just going back in, uh, it just dried while I was talking. So just going back in with a bit more red paint. All right, so now we're gonna do what's called a little like wet and wet blending. So we're gonna take some of this dark paint without cleaning my brush off. And I'm just gonna take a little bit. If you get too much on and you're worried about it, just kind of scrape it off. Uh, if you're low commitment, go to the side. Don't start in the middle. Um, you're going to kind of probably hate the first one that you've ever done. So just kind of know that you want to just kind of start very slowly. So you can see I just kind of whisked it in on the side. So I'm going very light brush strokes. I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm letting that wet paint kind of like blend it in. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Still low commitment. Start on the side. Don't go and start in the middle. Okay, because then you got to deal with it. So let's go low commitment. Let's go low. Okay, so let's just kind of go really light. Let that canvas kind of take what it wants. Anywhere where you get any of that brown paint that's a little too much, you can go back in with that red paint and just kind of soften it out. Okay, so again, just kind of letting that paint kind of mix in, letting it just take what it wants back and forth. Yeah, I'm going to pick up a little bit of red paint here. It's really dry, so it's just not blending very properly. So you see how the, you can just pick up that red paint and it'll just soften it out, soften it out. You want it to look hazy and soft. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, I'm, I'm liking that part right there. Okay, I'm going to a little bit more. And it's not blending, it's probably drying if it's not blending. So if it's not blending, you gotta pick up something else to kind of like make it blend. All right. That is looking good. Go, don't go too far. You wanna have most of this darkness up on the top. Don't pull that dark color down too far. We wanna keep this little sun color in here. Clean your brush out really, really, really well. All right. Okay. Bounce it down, up and down on the water. Just kind of tap it off. Let's see if I can change my angle here a little bit so you can see a little bit better. That's better. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, we kind of like got this part. We're gonna kind of like let this kind of dry and do its thing. Yeah, we can hit it with a blow dryer, but we have other things we have to do. So I'm kind of like one of those impatient painters where if, uh, you know, if you're waiting for something to dry, is there something else you can be doing on the canvas while you're waiting? And in this case, yes, there is. So we're going to put out a little bit of black paint. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to change my mind. We're going to do the yellow part first because I don't really want to mix black paint with my yellow. So we're going to just change my thought process. Okay. We're going to go just put a small amount of yellow out, not a lot. Like that's too much. Okay. Like I'd say half of that like probably at least half that. What you wanna do is we're gonna create this effect. Now it's gonna be really hard for, I'm hoping that I can pick it up better on camera than I ever have taught it in class. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of pick up a gob of it. So we're gonna kind of take our paintbrush and just kind of scoop it up, okay? 
Um, so it's going to be mostly on one side of the brush, right? Because like if I scoop it up with my hand, the paint is going to be mostly on this side of the brush. So when I go and I over, come over here to the canvas, I'm going to kind of like wipe it down and then I'm going to take my brush backwards. So, so it's going to be clean on this side and I'm going to kind of like wipe it back. Now, sometimes you can like go over again, like one more time or two more times, or you can kind of fuss with it just a little bit, but just know the more you fuss with it, the more you're going to kind of spread out that yellow paint. You can always go back in and pop in some more yellow if you kind of like blend it out, but just know you're going to probably make orange now because like we've got like the red down and if we add yellow to it, we're going to make orange. So it's just kind of like one of those things, don't worry about it too much. We're gonna cover it up with the tree. So you have to kind of like, be like one, two, three, maybe four or five and be done and get out, okay? All right, so no pressure, all right? So I'm gonna scoop up about half of that. Okay, so remember I said I had too much on. So see that gob, like on one side, nothing on the other, right? Okay, let's go over the canvas. So I'm gonna say it's about here. Okay, so we're gonna do a wipe. Ooh, that's lots on there. So I'm actually gonna take my brush. I'm gonna take and wipe it off on that side that there's a lot of paint on. Now see, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna wipe it off again. I just wanna flare this out a little bit. I wanna soften this. Softening that out. Nice, that's a little bit better. I went over like five times. So that's, that's good. I'm gonna like let my tree cover up some of this. Now let's go back in. I'm gonna just take a little bit of red paint. Take a little bit of red paint and just go like to the side, just kind of wipe it in, okay? That's pretty good. That's it. That's all you're looking for, okay? Now I'm an ish person. Now when I say ish, whatever kind of like looks good you're looking for that haziness this doesn't make any sense whatsoever we need to kind of like have this weird phase happening all right that's it for your, any other color we're using so see how much um that's like a lot of extra paint out the rest of the painting is all in black paint so let's get a black paint out <clears throat> okay A little bit. Oh, that's probably too much again. It's hard to put paint back. Okay. Now I'm going to use the big wide brush just to kind of uh, make my land really quickly. Now, before when we were painting the canvas, we were kind of like taking our brush and we were going like this back and forth and we were kind of like making it really big wide brush strokes and making it really soft and blended. This time we're going to take our brush and we're going to turn it this way and we're going to make our land and we're going to go across and make our land this way with the brush and then once you have like the top part of your land we'll like go and like this and fill in the rest of the bottom but when you are making your land like this now keep in mind the land is not perfectly flat land has ridges it has mountains it has hills it has boulders it has rocks it has deviations in the ground it has you know all of these things happening so i find when i have ever i have taught this a lot of people just go boom straight across put in a tree which that's cool that's great but we want to make it look a little bit more natural so what we i want you to do we are gonna get a little will smith we are gonna get a little jiggy with it all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brush with some of that black paint and you want to kind of like jig your hand you can kind of go soft sometimes, you can kind of jig it some more sometimes, you can kind of like take it up like on a mountain, but you want to kind of like just make your hand twitch. If your hand shakes already, boom, you're going to make perfect land. Um, just laughing. Um, we don't want perfectly straight, okay? I have seen this painting done 101 ways, so you can't really think of any different way you can. If you feel like there's a cliff here, I have seen somebody make a cliff and then paint like the Lion King. So kind of keep in mind how, how does your painting all evolve in here? 
Um, my tree is going to go kind of in the middle here. So I want you to kind of think about like, is there, is there a rock face here? Is there bushes along the sides? Where is my elephant going to sit? Where is my giraffe going to sit? Do I have a giraffe? Do I have an elephant? Is this it? So think about that when you're painting your land. I know it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, let's pick up some of that black paint. Make sure you're going above these kind of like scratchy white areas. All right, so we're gonna take our brush. You can always change it. If you don't like your land, you can always change it. You can always go bigger, you can't go smaller. Okay. All right, now fill it in. Take all that brush, just go the other way and fill in all of that, all the way down to the bottom. Yes, again, paint your edges. Okay. We're done with that brush for now. All right, is it starting to feel like we got a little bit more there? It's a little bit more interesting, a little bit more appealing. Um, so I would feel better if y'all hit this with blow dryer. So I'm just gonna go hit mine with the blow dryer just to make sure it's all good. And I will be right back. All right, so um, now we are going to work on our trees as I just touched my hand in the black paint. Um, so what you're going to do is we're gonna make some trees. Now we're gonna talk about trees for just a little bit. Um, so trees are uh, letters of the alphabet. Um, so we have the Y, because it goes like this, you know, the tree goes up like this and then the branches go out. So there's the Y. Um, there's also so like the V tree, it kind of goes out like this and then the branches kind of sit up here, okay. Um, we have the I tree. So he really is just a straight tree and he's got like the little Y's up on the top, but he's like pretty straight. And then we have like almost like a W. Um, so he kind of like is basically two V's if you had like two clumps of trees together. So we are gonna do an I, a Y, a V, possibly a W. And however you see your trees, I want you to just kind of envision it. And the way I do my trees is the way I do my trees. If you want to do them your way, do them your way. The results are gonna be awesome regardless. Okay, so um, I always say you have to grow your tree up from the root. Uh, trees kind of grow up and the leaves come up. So they're always thicker towards the bottom of the tree or the bottom um, towards the trunk and the ground and then they get skinny as they go up. Um, so it's easier if you kind of start on the bottom of where the ground is and then work your way up. And then you can kind of adjust uh, any thinness or thickness corrections as you need. Um, let's start with middle one. So that way we can kind of space everything out. So let's start with a Y. The Y is the easiest tree. Okay. So if you have a little too much paint on there, just kind of roll your brush off. So we're gonna start here. I kind of just holding my, I should get my head out of the way. I'm just gonna hold my brush here. Your hand shake, don't worry. You make awesome trees. Just let your hand shake. Okay. Come up here. And then I'm gonna start my Y. Don't worry about too much about how big it is, where the branches are going to live. We just want the basic part of the tree. You notice every now and again, if I need to add a little bit more width to it, I always kind of start towards the bottom. Okay. I'm a little thin in his middle, so I'm just going to kind of thicken him up. All right, cool. There's a Y, right? Pretty easy. 
There we go. Not splitter while that. Um, let's do. Let's do a little V right here. So a V is going to just be like one this way and then one that way. There we go. Actually, let's make this one a W. Nice and slow. Not a rush. Nice. Um, actually, let's do an eye. So we'll do an eye next. We'll do a little guy. Okay, that's good. That's an eye. And now let's do, let's do a W. Okay. So. All right, so I just kind of look back at any of the um, branches I have here and just see if there need to be a little bit of a better looking branch and I'll just go back in and fix it. That's looking pretty nice. All right, now you can see how um, it doesn't matter too much on like how that yellow part looks. It kind of breaks it all up. <clears throat> all right. Um, we are going to come in and we're going to do some little tiny branches with this brush. Again, if you don't like this brush, I would recommend getting uh, this one. This is like, like the number one uh, round brush. Uh, whichever one works, I'm going to use this one. So I'm just going to get some paint on it. And again, we're just gonna add more Ys onto here or just complete these lines. So I'm just gonna come up here. Don't go too crazy because we have to add in our branches. Or sorry, our leaves, I'm sorry, our leaves. These are gonna mostly get covered up, but we need to have kind of like the start of them. Okay, if the branches cross each other, let it happen. Again, all I'm making is just more and more Ys. All they are is just Ys. So I'm extending one line this way and one line the next way, making them soft. So don't go anything crazy. Like don't make an L. We aren't making L's. We're making nice little Ys. Grow them up towards the sky. Okay. Let's see little ones in the middle. Add some little branches. Some of these little ones on here to add in. Okay. 
Like, I'm gonna make this guy a little more of a baby tree. Sorry, my head keeps I'm so sorry. Okay, again, very ish, right? All right. So here's where we're going to go to our sponge. So um, I like to not use the sponge perfectly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our fingers or you can take like, um, like little um, pliers or like a little knife or something and just kind of get in there and pick out some of the sponge. So I'm just kind of taking my fingers and I want to make it look like a mouse came along and ate it. Ate little nibbles of it like cheese. All right. Okay. Don't make it perfect. Get some aggression out. You have a, like a hard day at work. Kind of take it out on the sponge. Make it like not perfect. You want to look like funky. Like little like that. That is perfect. So you see, let's see. You see how it doesn't look very nice. Looks like a mouse came along and ate it, right? So we're gonna take this now and we're gonna do something that I, if you live through the 90s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, we're gonna do a little sponging technique. So you're gonna take your sponge and you're going to dip it in the black paint. Now we're gonna do a little thing called test it before you press it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take um, your sponge and you see how like we have all this paint on here. I wanna tap off some of it, okay? And then while I, I kind of tapped off some, I'm gonna also kind of like just test it, lightly pressing it. I'm gonna be able to see how it's gonna make the leaves, okay? So very lightly, you can see how it's gonna kind of leave those impressions. So now when I want you to put this on your leaves, I want you to kind of like rotate your hand. So you're gonna kind of like press, move, press, move, press, move. You don't wanna be like boom, 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 boom because you're just gonna make repetition. So what you wanna do is kind of change that effect each time. You wanna have like this divot is not gonna be in the same place every every time this is what it's gonna kind of look like. So we're gonna start kind of up over here. Okay, see how I'm kind of twisting my hand. Make sure you get it down by those leaves. Well, make sure you're getting some areas pretty dark. Keep going until you have no paint left on your sponge because I guarantee you there's lots on there. Okay. All right, so I'm kind of getting a little dry sponge here. So I'm just going to go back in and get a little bit more paint again. Put some on, tap it off. Okay, go back and then rotate your hand. Very light presses can always get more paint on. Just want to really thick in some spots. Just so see like, we, if you have a lot like that, go back with your sponge and like a drier spot and then just kind of spread it out. Don't be scared of that paint, get it in there. Okay, get a bit more in here.
Okay, so I think I just want to kind of bring that up a little bit higher right here. It's looking pretty good. Okay. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to leave that for now. I may potentially add some little pushes along the side, but I'm feeling pretty good about that. So just kind of put your sponge off to the side. Now, here comes the, here comes the fine technique. Okay. So I want you to kind of figure out which of these images you want to use. Um, I'm going to use the giraffe technique, or, or I'm going to use the technique on the giraffe first, no particular reason, just for the fact that I always kind of like have the most, I, I like doing the giraffe, so I'm just going to pick the giraffe first. So I'm going to kind of decide, do I want a left facing giraffe or right facing giraffe? Um, I did print out the um, left facing elephant and you would kind of be like, oh, well, you can kind of put him here, but he could also be, you know, kind of leave in the safari maybe maybe he's done maybe he's done at the watering hole it's time to go home it's taking baby elephant home it's his bedtime you know the sun's going down um so i'm kind of thinking kind of like that so i'm going to kind of think i'm going to do them headed out that way so i kind of think i'm going to do a giraffe this way just so that way everybody's kind of a little different so then what you're going to do is what i like to kind of do is be like boom kind of think he might look good here they kind of like put it up put it down be like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, maybe not um i don't want one that the head's kind of pointed this way i want kind of one that his head's pointed this way so i'm thinking this one this one this one this one and in proportion to the draft i think or to the elephant I think I'm going to use this one okay so what you're going to do is since you've decided that you want to do this one you're going to tear it out very carefully uh, and make sure you leave some white area around the bottom of the feet so all you're going to do is just you want to save the other ones for another time go ahead I got a little too close to his ears so actually I'm gonna do this one since I got a little too close to his ears. I'm gonna use this guy. He'll have to be pretty careful. All right, so he's gonna live here. So I'm gonna just kind of move my paint palette off to the side here for one quick second. Just so I can show you what to do here. Okay, <clears throat> so what you want to do is you want to take your image, turn it upside down. So regardless of whether you're using chalk or if you're using uh, that mechan or the pencil, either way, you're going to do the same technique. So you're going to take your chalk or your pencil, and you're going to rub it all over the backside. Okay, all over. Make sure you get down by the feet. Really important, you get a good coverage. Really, really important. Okay. You're gonna do the, give it a little, a little um, extra, a little blow on there. Get rid of the extra chalk. Okay. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take a pencil or if you don't have a pencil handy, you can use the backside of your paintbrush and go around it. Uh, I'm gonna use a pencil just because I have one handy. If you don't, like I said, you can make adjustments. So now you're gonna turn it over. So this is the chalk side. I'm gonna take the chalk side and put it to our canvas. So make sure you try and put the giraffe's feet down into the ground. Don't worry about them being covered up by the black because that's okay. Um, if he is above the ground and he is flying in the air, all you'll do is you'll just paint a little bit of a, a black little hill or take his, uh, the black up to his feet. All right, so I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna put him over by these trees. I'm gonna put him right in there. Okay, so you're gonna take that. And then you're going to very carefully draw around the image. Oh, sorry, my head's in the way. Carefully go 
around. Image here. Take your time. You have to press a little bit harder. Go ahead. You want to make sure that it's on there. So don't worry about it. And the chalk will go away. I'll show you how we get rid of the chalk line. Take your time. Okay, so now it's reveal time. All right, you ready? Oh yeah, there's your giraffe. You can see his outline there. His ears didn't get quite in there, so that's okay. You always make sure you keep this handy because if you need to kind of like fix anything, you can use this to kind of be like, ah, oh, okay. So the ears are a little whacked out. Let's fix that. So um, I would recommend you taking a very skinny brush, so that liner brush, um, or you can use a round brush, but you got to be very careful around all those small parts. So the smaller the brush, the better, so that way you can get in all these little details. So go in, um, I'm going to start down here just so then, actually I'm going to start here. Just paint on the inside of that chalk line, not the outside on the inside. And again, go nice and slow. I'm going to fill in his ears after because it looks like he's not quite right. Which seems Okay, there we go. Oh, and I did notice when I dropped my brush. So if you ever have this happen to you, you notice this black mark here. That was where I dropped the black paint. So get your brush wet. This is just wet paint. And I like scratched it around, just kind of activate paint out with a kind of like a wet brush but no paint on it I'm just going to kind of keep lifting it keep lifting it and I'll just kind of take my fingers and wipe it off so I'll take my brush wipe it with my fingers wipe it with my fingers wipe it with my finger and you'll be able to kind of get that blob off as long as your paint color is dry. Okay, so see there, that's a good thing to learn. See, mistakes happen for a reason. It's a good learning experience. Ah, there we go. So if you ever have that happen, fear not, there is a way to fix it.
Okay, now you can see that black is just kind of burying his feet into the ground. That's perfect. That's kind of what you want, is just to make sure that his feet are kind of buried in the ground there. Now there's a million ways you could recreate this painting. I've taught this one in several of my painting classes and many time I visit somebody's home and they have completed this painting. It's always hanging up on their wall and it's one of my favorite ones because it just always looks so good. And I have faith that you guys will do good as well. If you have struggle, if you struggle with your animals, just know it's okay. Take your time. Keep practicing this technique. It will help you. Okay, giraffe meat is done. Let's do the elephant. Again, he's headed that way. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just rip off just a little bit extra around his feet. This is just gonna help me figure out where I need to kind of like place him. Okay. Rip off that tree. We don't need the tree anymore because we painted that. Somebody asked me why we, um, why I didn't do the transfer technique on the tree, and I said because you need to, you need to learn how to do something. You can't learn just kind of have easy technique for everything. There has to be some process in there. Okay, so elephant. Oh, the baby might get cut off by the tree. Okay, I always like the baby though. I want the baby. Maybe he's kind of, I'm trying to make it so that way he's not kind of like cut off too much by that tree. That's not too bad. Okay, so I'm not going to do it over here. Where did my chalk go? There it is. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over here and do the chalk. So again, just rubbing it on my backside. Okay. And a little, little blow with air. Okay. So make sure that's dry. Hmm. Okay, he's gonna go like that, I guess. Okay. I'm just carefully. And always do the little peekaboo technique. So you do that and it looks pretty good. I might miss like this little part right there, but that's okay. And I'm gonna put the baby in. And the nice part about this chalk knit technique is if he doesn't look good behind that tree, I can just opt him out. And sometimes that is okay if you wanna opt him out.
Okay. He doesn't look too bad. He doesn't look too bad at all. Okay, so let's do that same thing again. We're just gonna fill everything in with black paint. Again, make sure you have your, your image handy. So if you need to kind of fix anything you can. I'm gonna start with the mama first. Okay, so I'm gonna just switch to a bigger brush and fill the rest of that in. I don't think I'm gonna add baby. He looks kinda, I think I'm done with baby. Yeah, he's not gonna be in there. So you see how you can opt him out? I just don't think he's gonna look as effective behind that tree there. That's okay. And maybe these two had a, had a discussion and they disagreed and now they're, oh, they're like, peace out, man. Okay. All right, so now that's it. That's the whole painting. If you wanted to add anything more at this point, you could. Um, for example, if you feel like you want just some bushes over here in the corner, um, just to kind of add some interest, you can just kind of tap. Make it look like we got some bushes kind of like up in here. Okay, and then maybe there's just a little bit down over here. It's a little too much paint, so just kind of spread it out a little bit. And maybe some by these trees down in here. All right, that is it. That is the painting. Um, it is super easy, best technique I can ever show you how to do. Um, also, one note, you're gonna notice I'm not touching the chalk. I'm gonna leave this chalk on there, trust me. Wait for your painting to dry for about two hours. Come back to it in about two hours when all that paint has settled, it has cured, it's um, shifted and everything is completely 100% dry. And then you can take a very light, um, lightly, like super lightly damp um, paper towel or just a quick baby wipe or a quick face cloth or something with very, very little water on it. 
and just give it the good old like one, two wipe with um, the cloth and all that dust will be gone. All that chalk dust will be gone and it will look beautiful. Um, so for example, if I just come over here by this giraffe, I'm just gonna do a light little, I just don't wanna rub it too hard, but you can see that now he pops there quite a bit more. Uh, he still does have a little bit of chalk around his body, but you'll be able to see him pop quite a bit more and be a little bit more pronounced. Um, but that's it. That's the safari painting one hour down in and done. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, next paint class is going to be, I believe it's the December 16th already. Um, it'll be the two Fridays from now and the time will be about the same. So I hope to see you at the next class and have a great night, everybody.